This is a revision video for Year 12 on an extract from Aurora Lee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, which we'll refer to as The Sweetness of England. Elizabeth Barrett Browning was born in Durham in 1806, but she spent her childhood in Ledbury in the Morvens, um, near Birmingham. Her father encouraged her poetry from a young age. She read an essay called Vindication of the Rights of Women by Mary Wollstonecraft, which was a very early feminist text and became a supporter of her writing. Uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, incidentally, uh, was the mother of Mary Shelley, who wrote Frankenstein. An undiagnosed illness meant Elizabeth was frail and weak. She was prescribed opium and morphine, which she became dependent on, and some critics believe that this could have contributed to her vivid imagination in the way that she describes things. Um, later on in her life, um, Elizabeth had a very close connection with her father initially, um, but she wrote poetry protesting against slavery. Her father owned plantations in Jamaica, which is how he created a lot of his wealth, and he believed that the Emancipation Act could ruin his business. So Elizabeth, protesting against these barbaric practices um, and advocating the freedom of slavery, uh, wasn't a very popular idea with him. And she was also greatly affected by the drowning of her brother. He died in a sailing accident um, after accompanying her to Torquay to recover from lung disease. And she was also greatly affected by the death of her mother as well. So she was almost deeply depressed in a way um, that goes beyond normal mourning. In 1844, she met Robert Browning, who's also a famous poet, and they began their courtship through letters after Robert Browning wrote to her to celebrate her poetry and to say how much he liked her poetry. They married in secret, as she thought her father would disapprove, um, and she kept the um, surname Barrett, um, joining it with Browning, in order not to be left out of any inheritance. Um, however, they, they lived comfortably in it Italy after they married, but her father did disinherit her, um, as he did to any of his children who married. Um, so that personal connection and that kind of happy life that she had had with her father as a child, um, that wasn't the case later in her life. Uh, she died in 1861 in Robert Browning's arms. So the extract is taken from a much longer poem called Aurora Lee, and this was written in blank verse and in nine books, which was said to be the woman's number. It's the first person perspective of the title character, Aurora. And Elizabeth Barrett Browning referred to it as the most mature of my works and the one into which my highest convictions upon life and art have entered. So it's very often compared with Wordsworth's The Prelude um, and seen as a very, very um, influential poem, um, especially by a female writer. The first book describes Aurora's childhood and living with an aunt, an aunt in England after the death of her parents. Previously, she'd been living with her parents in Italy. Her aunt tries to teach her to behave like a lady. She discovers the books in her father's library and reads them to herself. And the extract we look at is taken from the end of the first book. Um, the extract that we look at for the exam is slightly different to the published version and has some lines taken out. So just be aware of that. Be careful if you're looking up notes or if you're looking at anything else on the internet or in the library. Whoever lives true life will love true love. I learnt to love that England. Very oft before the day was born, or otherwise through secret windings of the afternoons, I threw my hunters off and plunged myself among the deep hills, as a hunted stag will take the waters, shivering with the fear and passion of the course. And when at last escaped, so many a green slope built on slope betwixt me and the enemy's house behind, I dared to rest, or wander, like a rest, made sweeter for the step upon the grass, and view the ground's most gentle dimplement, as if God's finger touched but did not press in making England such an up and down of verdure, nothing too much up or down, a ripple of land, such little hills, the sky can stoop to tenderly and the wheat fields climb. So um, Aurora, the character, it's very easy to think that this is uh, Elizabeth speaking, but you must make sure that you're aware that it's a persona and that you always describe it as the persona and not the author herself. So England for Aurora became homely. It wasn't her home, her home is Italy, but she learnt to love that England. Um, and she really does repeat the word love three times um, in the first two lines. That shows the strength of her feelings for this landscape. The soft, repetitive L sounds in the first two lines create a soothing tone. The live, the life, the end of will, love, true love, learnt to love that England. So it's very soothing um, and kind of reflects the way that she feels about the landscape. It shows a personal connection with nature because she kind of likens herself to a hunted stag. 
Um, so where we looked at the ice skating episode in Wordsworth's Prelude and he talked about the hunt and he talked about that as being um, something joyful. Elizabeth Aurora actually um, places herself as the hunted stag um, and talks about how uh, the hunted stag would, would be fearful but also talks about passion of the course. Um, and my year 12s picked up on this in the lesson today and started thinking that that was a very unusual image, almost as if she's enjoying being chased. She enjoys the secret connection and she takes solace in the deep hills um, and that very, very personal connection with nature as well. Um, it's a simile comparing herself to a deer. Further down, uh, the parenthesis um, and the brackets as if God's finger, it makes the narrator's thoughts and intentions clearer um, and, the, and it almost makes it more conversational, as if you're having that conversation with the uh, persona. You've also got the religious connection that nature's beauty um, is so powerful that it must be divine. And I think it's a beautiful image about the idea of just touching the ground to create kind of those gentle rolling hills, rather than kind of the dramatic landscape of the Alps or the Rockies or any other mountain range. Um, Maya Twelves also liked the imagery of kind of gentleness and softness with the um, words like sweeter and gentle and ripple and tenderly. So the idea that things are very gentle and very smooth and again it's kind of quite a soothing landscape. Um, also the repetition of up and down creates the, the rhythm of the landscape um, and small words like little emphasise that tenderness. Verger refers to green vegetation and, and the colours of the landscape. Um, you also have the personification of nature, that the sky is stooping to tenderly um, and that everything is kind of connected and once more in harmony. Such nooks of valleys lined with orchises, fed full of noises by invisible streams and open pastures where you scarcely tell white daisies from white dew at intervals, the mythic oaks and elm trees standing out, self-poised upon their prodigy of shade. I thought my father's land was worthy, too, of being my Shakespeare's. So you've got the auditory images um, that are calming and soothing, the fed full of noises by invisible streams. Um, and you've got the use of detail. So Barrett Browning's really noticing the joy and beauty in nature, the little nooks that maybe nobody else notices, um, and the fact they're lined with orchises. Invisible streams is quite a paradoxical statement um, because we're very aware of the stream from the noise, so therefore it can't really be invisible. So um, that's just kind of an interesting image to use. She also refers to the literary figure of Shakespeare, um, the idea of England's greatness and kind of the, the power and the joy of being English and the, and the pride that people would have in their country. And as a personal connection um, throughout, it's a first person narrator, so it makes the um, connection with nature more personal. But then the thrushes sang and shook my pulses and the elm's new leaves, and then I turned and held my finger up and bade him mark that howsoever the world went ill as he related, certainly the thrushes still sang in it, at which word his brow would soften and he bore with me in melancholy patience, not unkind, while breaking into voluble ecstasy I flattered all the beauteous country round. So. Barrett Browning suggests that there's always joy and comfort to be found in nature. Um, so the he in this in this poem um, refers to her cousin Romney, Aurora's cousin Romney, um, who would walk with her sometimes. And she shows the difference between the way that he felt about the world and the way that she feels. And so the idea that however bad things are in the world, the thrushes are still singing and you can take pleasure, you can take comfort in nature. Um, the idea of, of flattering the beauty of country suggests that nature is human, that it can respond to these, um, these compliments. On the line, and shook my pulses on the elm's new leaves, it's affecting human and nature alike. Um, so she feels that connection with nature, she's feeling the same thing that nature might do. Um, and the voluble ecstasy really emphasises the true joy that she has in all of nature's details. Um, and kind of sets her apart from her companions who don't see the world in the same way. And they're kind of bearing with her, they're kind of putting up with her with melancholy patience um, while she is in ecstasy. So the contrast between her and her companion is really...
as poets use, the skies, the clouds, the fields, the happy violets hiding from the roads, the primroses run down to, carrying gold, the tangled hedgerows where the cows push out impatient horns and tolerant churning mouths, to its dripping ash bones, hedgerows all alive with birds and gnats and large white butterflies, which look as if the mayflower had sought life and palpitated forth upon the wind. Hills, vales, woods, netted in a silver mist, farms, granges, doubled up among the hills, and cattle grazing in the watered vales, and cottage chimneys smoking from the woods, and cottage gardens smelling everywhere, confused with smell of orchards. So she's likening herself to other writers in, in terms of the fact that she knows that she hasn't been the first to write about nature, um, but her attention on small details, the personification of small details, the tangled hedgerows, the cows pushing out their horns, um, really suggests that she's trying to make it seem as if she's noticing everything. So other poets write about skies and the clouds, but she's writing about little primroses, she's writing about tangled hedgerows, um, but she's really noticing the small details that make nature beautiful. Palpitated suggests a kind of heartbeat um, rhythm, so that this is the very life force of nature, um, all this kind of listing of different um, aspects of nature and the joy that she's finding in them, um, a part of a heartbeat, a palpitation. You've got um, the simile, look as if the mayflower had sought life, and it's the life and energy of nature, um, that the plants want to fly on the wind, um, and it's a real kind of beauty, beautiful energy and a real beauty. Um, the listing emphasises the joy that Aurora feels in being in this environment, um, and there's listing kind of throughout the last part of this stanza um, to really kind of build up um, an intense amount of images, uh, natural images, um, as well as human ones working in harmony. Uh, so yeah, yes, again, you've got the harmony of nature and man, um, and also the repetition of and, again, suggests that emphasising, so and cattle grazing, and cottage chimneys, and cottage gardens, confused. Um, so it's almost as if she's being overcome with the emotion and the beauty of the nature. And also the sensory descriptions of the smell, of the smoke, and of the, of the numerous uh, visual images that she's describing as well. Uh, minor structural point to mention, iambic pentameter is used throughout, um, which kind of suggests the heartbeat, perhaps reflecting the love that she has for this landscape, and it gives it a movement and energy as well, it gives it a, a rhythmic beauty um, to her poetry.